Yeah, I recording. Know. I ah, oh, I won the. <laughs> yeah, I drove this far. Sorry. <laughs> the room was on to see who could record first, and Sean won. He just yeah. popped. Starts recording. Um, yeah, so you're here at the weekly community call for chaos. It has been chaos already here in the meeting, but that's okay. We like it that way. Um, yeah, here's the meeting minutes. Is that muted? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'll turn on my, I'll mute. <laughs> I like the, it's like intro music to the meeting. <laughs> That's what we need. We definitely <laughs> need intro music. Just to put ourselves in. There we go. And, just, and out, okay. outro when we're done. We should leave. <laughs> yes. yes, yes, I, I'm 100% behind this plan. I think it would be fantastic. Nobody does that, right? Like nobody does that <laughs> stuff at their own meetings in other projects, so. That will set us members would be like, what if I joined? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's that kind of day. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, okay, so if you haven't added your name, let us know how you're going, your day is going, or your week is going. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and work, I guess. So the first thing on here is just, oh my gosh, I can't believe it's happening again. Like I just, I'm so over it. I'm so over it. So in case you weren't aware, daylight savings time is coming March 20, March, sorry, March 10th in the US, March 31st in Europe, March 29th in Israel, Egypt, like nobody can agree on this. So we all suffer really is what it happens. The community managers suffer the most, I think. Um, so here's my proposal and you may, may you may hate it, and that's totally fine if you do. Um, but we have so many meetings on the chaos calendar and some of them are tied to their local times like the chaos Africa community meeting is tied to their time so that daylight savings happens. They don't change for them they change for us, which is fine. Um, <clears throat> as long as we don't overlap with everything. But um, we've tried to do the Google groups I can't manage to figure this out to make it work the way we want. I would like to just make every single event its own calendar so people subscribe to the event that they want and that might be a terrible idea, but I don't I don't know how else to allow people the freedom to not have to get all of the things in their email or in their on their calendars, what do we think. How bad do we hate this. Uh... Well, I don't, I don't deal with the time zone or the daylight saving stuff. So I don't feel the pain that you're feeling. <laughs> so like pretending there was no pain in it, I would prefer everything in one calendar. Um, uh, yes. Uh, I'm also thinking we could have one like main calendar that's an aggregate of everything as well. Um, and that would be the one that goes on the website. But if people wanted to just subscribe to one event, then there would be an option for them to do that. Because that's this is what happens when the daylight saving is changing for some and changing for others and changing at different times. People who have copied never right. know what time it is. They always show up at the wrong time or miss, you know, and I'm just, I feel bad for them. Gotcha. Go ahead, Georg. I'm very much in favor to have events that are centrally managed here that people can subscribe to or we had at one point a couple of weeks ago discussed adding people to the invites directly and then having them recreated so that uh, invited members don't see who else is invited so it's not public um, and i think with that solution we can keep them all in the same calendar we have now we just have to recreate the uh, series, the event series. The downside I see with that is the management overhead because someone needs to take requests to add email addresses and add people and remove them if they want to be removed. Um, it would be easier if there was a calendar or something that people can opt in and opt out without manual interaction on our side. Um, so if that means we need to have multiple calendars, one for each meeting, then we can have that and have one aggregated that is still shown on the website. So 
That's my opinion on this. And I absolutely agree that having people copy this into their own calendar <coughs> change is a mess right now. Is there a is there an alternative to Google Calendar that might solve our problems for us? Has anyone looked into that? I have not. That might be worth that might be worth looking into if there's an, an alternative that would uh, provide us the ability to uh, kind of sort some of those events rather than having to uh, uh, connect to all of them. Uh, I don't. I I myself don't know if that exists, but uh, uh, it's certainly it's possible. If it exists. To my best understanding, I've only seen either Microsoft uh, Calendar or the Google Calendar in all the invites and everything. So these are the two options. So um, what we're realizing is that's a perfect opportunity for an open source project. <laughs> Somebody wants to build a calendar that will just let you subscribe yeah. to an individual event. Like it shouldn't be that hard. I don't know why it is. I don't know why it is. Because that's really what it comes down to. Like that's that's really the issue, I think. Um, and and also, what time zone do we tie meetings to? Uh, which we kind of loosely have been all tying to the U.S. Central time zone, unless it's something like Chaos Africa. Um, and then we'll talk about this in a minute. The new Chaos Asia meetings that are restarting, we're going to tie it to more local time to them, so they don't change when we change. Um, yeah. Yeah, and as Ildiko mentions, that uh, when an invite is created in a U.S. time zone, and then if you go over to Europe, then it's it's messed up when daylight savings happens, and vice versa. This is only this is really only an issue if somebody copies the calendar. Is that right? I think is so. Um, I yeah. I don't copy it. I just have it like added. You know what I mean? It's that toggle switch that I can turn on and turn off. Yeah, I think too um, that when daylight savings happens, it's going to be a, for for some of these meetings, it will be a change for the attendees, and they may not have like they may not get a notification that the time is changing. I see. You know, like they just have it on their calendar, and they know when like this meeting happens the same time every week. So, I think that's the other thing is like the notifications that there has been a change. So that we can probably like we try to mention them in the meetings that hey, this is you know daylight savings time is coming. So beware, make sure you check the calendars. You know, we try to remind people, but I feel yeah. like if there was a better way where we could send it out to whoever subscribed to this calendar, just send a message or something like, hey, this is changing. Because if you're subscribed to it, not copying it, isn't it, it a lot better? It is. 100 percent you, you can manage it. Like everything will shift, but you could like put the chaos at yeah. the meeting. You could just move it back one hour up one hour. Like yeah. on that day, you'd only have to shift a few things on the calendar. Yeah, yes, I could manage. If if people, if it was individuals, I could manage that because any change I would make to the central calendar or to the main uh -huh. calendar there would reflect on their all their calendars everywhere. As long as they're subscribed, not as as they're subscribed. copied. Yeah. As, soon as, they, as soon as they copy, I understand the problem. It, the, the chain is broken. Yeah. yeah. They forked it and it's no longer connected. Yeah, I get it. Oh, yeah. So I would uh, I would like to say I'm not a big fan of having the, the invites because that's a bit of a that's a bit of a gatekeeping mechanism. Uh, even if we even if we try really hard to get invites out to everyone, that 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 gatekeeping mechanism is still kind of there. So I would avoid the the invites if we could. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Um, you can, uh, Rhoda says you can hide recipients if you're sending by a Gmail. And I think we have tried this, but I, I we think it's, get it to work. yeah, I can't get it to work properly. Um, and I know that, um, I know Ruth has been playing this with this for, for something else. And there is a, there is a difference between if you create an event in an email versus creating it in the calendar. So I, I mean, I can play with that, but I think it still comes down to having to invite people individually. Okay. Oh, and yeah, Georg, that is a good point. The same. So right now, that's how it is. We have, we do have different events that are in different time zones on the same chaos calendar. 
so I think that that's um, that is yes we wouldn't necessarily need to change anything unless the group wanted to change the the time like if everybody's in Africa and we have it on the U.S. Central then we could we could change that yeah Ruth go ahead uh, in um, I think there was a point you made about having different um, calendars um, maybe something I want to chime in there is like we could have the general one right and then we could have chapter specific um, calendars as well um, because I know currently in chaos Africa we... John, you need to, you need to mute again. sorry <laughs> yeah so uh, we have clear, about, yeah we have about I think three meetings that happened every week from the developers design and um, um, the general chaos Africa meetings. So if we could have like, and then this is what I played around, around what I've been playing around. Like if we could have like a chaos Africa um, calendar as well, just like people can subscribe in, in the case where they don't want to just have everything in their calendar, because then sometimes when we, uh, when I direct people to add the calendar, they don't understand there's so many meetings, right? So they don't get overwhelmed. So they can just subscribe to just one calendar, a chapter calendar, for example. And they optionally could subscribe to the main calendar where like every every meeting is there. And then we have the one where we have like chapter specific ones where if they subscribe to that calendar, they have um the meetings that are you know specific to that chapter. And we could add this general meeting as a requirement like for each of those chapters so it could be there as well so that's something um, I could also show that to you Elizabeth. I think that is that's a really good idea um, I was also thinking too about like our folks that just come to the context working groups like somebody who's just coming to the university open source like they don't need everything either but like right now I think we're kind of managing that through a mixture of invitations and personal copying so um, that was another reason too that we could or that we sh could think about separating them out is just so like those folks in the context working groups could just just subscribe to the one they care about not everybody you know all of the things so maybe we even break up into like um groups so like you're saying ruth have the chapter groups we could also have like the contact context working groups as a group as a calendar like so they would say okay i'm going to subscribe to the context working groups but i'm going to see ospo university and science but at least that's only three everyone yeah something is going way wrong elizabeth I think, uh, yeah elizabeth, elizabeth you you can mute the microphone is closed something happened to your microphone like Whoa. or your Okay. <laughs> or a dune sandworm. That may be a more graphic <laughs> presentation. Uh, okay. I think maybe. I have uh, to run to a faculty lunch. That's thing. fine. So I will let you all continue. Okay. So, I'm. Sorry okay. to leave as Elizabeth is crapping out. <laughs> Here, I can share my screen. So real, real yeah. quick, I would like to, I would like to add that uh, managing invite lists and managing each of these calendars separately. I mean, this, this all, it adds a lot of complexity and it adds a lot of places where there can be uh bad information or redundant information or places where we need to, to update it. Uh, the benefit of having the one calendar right now is that it's one place. It's our definitive truth for when things are happening. Uh, and I, I would 
I would recommend we stay with that format because it's the it's the less complex uh, way to move forward. It's less work for us moving forward. Uh, and then I would add the so the way I manage that is I actually subscribe to it, and then I copy the specific mess the the specific uh, meetings that I want to use onto my calendar, and then I just turn off the subscription. And then every now and again I'll I'll or I I turn off the display for the the subscribed one. And then every now and again, I'll turn it on and just compare to see if those uh, those dates are still there. So, yeah, I, I I actually also prefer that. Just me personally, I think having a single calendar is the way to go. Um, and instead of trying to find a technical solution to it, we try to provide a social solution, just reminding people that there have been changes and you might wanna, if you've copied, you might want to kind of like what you were talking about, Kevin, like make sure that your copied calendar is in sync with the subscribed calendar. That's my that's my um, approach too. Because I agree, I think having multiple calendars can get pretty confusing. Sorry about that. Thanks for taking over, Matt. Sure. Um, so what I'm hearing is that we um, we are just going to keep the main calendar and just try to get people to remember and keep reminding them to just check. Yeah, and Okay. I think so. So I, I guess I'm, I'm a little not sure how the people, I would like to ask the people too in the context working groups who just show up for one meeting, how they would feel, or do they just copy that meeting over? Or like, do you have a feel for that? Cause I also want to be accessible for them not to have to, you know, come to every, or, see every Not see everything yeah, yeah i think it would just be copying over and just reminding people every now and then we okay. made a change to the main calendar and if you copy calendar invites over you might want to just double check okay make sure you're still in sync and georg says um to not have an alert and i've heard they people wanted the alert. They didn't like it when we didn't have an alert. So I'm not sure how to solve that problem. The, so when I copied it over, now I get alerts for all, no, I didn't copy everything, I subscribed. And I get alerts for all of those. Maybe there's probably a way that I can just disable the alert for the entire calendar and then only turn it on in my own calendar for the ones that I copied. What I would prefer is that there are no alerts by default. So when we copy over the entire calendar or subscribe to it, we don't get 11 alerts each week, but only the ones that we copy into our calendar, we can modify and add the alert, whether we like to be alerted 10 minutes before one hour before, one day before. Everyone might have different alerting preferences too. Do I want to be alerted via email or as an alert in the calendar? And there are different options and removing it from the central calendar, everyone copies it into their personal, the events they are interested in, and then they can set their own personal alerts. That is a, okay, that makes sense then. I will make that change for sure. Let me just put an action item here so I don't forget to do that. Um, okay, so we want to keep the central calendar, but remove alerts, notifications by default, and we will rely on social engineering to uh, communicate. Okay. Okay, fair enough. Anything else before we move on? I have another question on the events that are currently in the calendar. Um, I think some people have are um, invited on some of the events. Maybe it would be prudent to remove them and send them an email. Hey, here's the new process that we are following. Um, yes, agreed. Yeah, because that it seems like that's really the only way to hide. Because we really we have tried like Elizabeth has tried 
removing them. I've tried, you know, or hiding them anyway. Yeah. Tried yeah. hiding them. We've tried to recreate the events like you were talking about earlier, Georg. You know, like on that with that check. There was a check box that says hide names. We just cannot. It won't work. Yeah, it doesn't seem to want to mm -hmm. actually. So it's a button that. <laughs> it's a choice that doesn't matter what you choose. <laughs> I feel like it's a social experiment on Google's part just to see how many people are clicking that. It's like the closed door <laughs> button on an elevator. <laughs> right. You know, I don't think it actually closes the door. <laughs> just a button. I think it is. I think it is just a button. So mm -hmm. <laughs> make you feel good. Does it make you feel like you have some agency of your own life? Uh -huh. like yeah, I love it. Okay, uh, well, if there are anything else um, that y'all want to bring up about the calendars, we can certainly continue this conversation on Slack. No worries at all, because it is a thing, I know. Uh, so the next thing is that uh, we have someone named Divya Mohan who would like to revive our Chaos Asia chapter. Um, not that it really went away, it just kind of has been a little dormant for a while. So she would like to um, start kind of making this a little more active and uh, that includes meetings and Slack. So we are gonna tentatively have them every other Thursday starting next week at 8 a.m. Indian Standard Time, which is um, more you know applicable to that, to that area of the world. What's confusing now is that it shows up, if you look at just the chaos calendar, it will show up as a Wednesday evening event for central time. So I, I don't know if we care if that's a thing, I don't know how to solve it. <laughs> Again, I'm just oh, I'm over it all. Just I'm put it on and let's move on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, hopefully we can just communicate that this is actually a Thursday morning event um, that happens in that time zone. So I wanted to let everyone know, though, that if you are in that area of the world and you would like to start um, coming to those meetings, we would love it. And also um, the Slack channel is still around. It's still still there. So feel free to chime in because I think Divya um, put a note in there this morning. Yeah, Georg, go ahead. Is it possible that when people in Indian Standard Time look at the calendar, that they see it correctly? And so it's only confusing for us on the other side of the planet? Oh, I... I yeah, I think you're right. I think everybody sees it in their own local time zone. They do see it in their local time zone. Because mm -hmm. on the website, it says this: these meetings are shown in Central. And I'm not in Central, and I see them in Central. Oh, okay. But uh, maybe that's a setting we can do on the subscription. Yeah, that would be that would be nice. It would be nice, yeah. All this calendar stuff today. I'm telling you, it's the bane of my existence. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm not sure how they will know. Like, how will the website know what time zone this person is who's visiting? Like, I don't know if it's that smart. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. I think the question is just, can you show a Google calendar in the local time zone on the web or something like that? I'll share my experience. Uh, I have copied that calendar because remember when I joined FGC over here in Florida, I was having the same issue. I don't want to show every meeting in my calendar, so I had to show only those which are now relevant. So I copied that and it copied as a central since my calendar was switched to the Pacific, so uh, not the Eastern time zone. So it automatically switched it for me. So the calendar copies it through a time zone, but it then changes based on uh, my current time zone. Okay, okay. So the copy does it, but if you yes. subscribe, or just look at it on the, you know, we have the calendar on the yeah. page. Yeah, so I have uh, un, uh, like hidden the subscription because it was subscribed to my personal calendar on the Gmail I've added yeah. and I've just copied the particular meeting that I'm interested in and added to my calendar. Okay. okay. All right, well, I'll play around some more with Google calendars. <laughs> have a busy I'm, afternoon. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking at the Google Calendar documentation right now. Yeah. Uh, there, there looks like there's some settings and some things that we could do on this to uh, make it fit what we would like it to do a little bit more. To like show time zones when people come to the web page? Uh, yeah, possibly have the, uh, have the time zone uh, of the calendar displayed be uh, 
based on the whatever browser settings they have coming in. Okay. Well, that'd be, uh, and it looks good. like there may be a way to grab specific events as well. Ooh, that would uh, be awesome. I'll take some time and and look at and look at and see if I can figure it out. We may have to uh we may have to change the code on the website for it, but the embed code. Uh, but that's not uh terrible. So yeah, I'll, no. I'll I'll take a look. Thanks, Kevin. No, thanks. That's awesome. I appreciate your help with that. Okay. Um, moving away from calendars, sort of. These there are dates involved in these mm -hmm. other things, sadly. But um, I just wanted to, these are all just kind of announcements. I wanted to make sure everybody knew that ChaosCon NA, you can register for that now, which you have to do through OSSNA since it is a co-located event. Um, and I'm super helpful in not putting any kind of links here, so you'll have to find them yourselves. Um, there, I also want to make sure everybody knew there was a software visu visualization, visualization, say that four times fast, workshop in the morning of that Monday. Um, so Chaos Con's in the afternoon, um, but there is a, a Chaos Software Visualization workshop in the morning. And that is um, $7, and the Chaos Con NA is $10. And it is in Seattle in April. Georg, have you sorted out with Grimoire Lab for that visualization thing <laughs> in the morning? I am meeting tomorrow with Sean to okay. get uh, discuss with him what the plan is and okay. how we can fit all of our software in on that event. Wait, right on. Awesome. Thanks, Georg and Sean. Um, the next one is I just wanted to let people know we will have a table at scale and OSSNA. Um, so we'll be in uh, the exhibitor place booth area, whatever you want to call it. So if you are going to be there giving a talk or attending just and you want to help out with the booth, that would be amazing. So just let me know. and We can we can sort that out um, times time wise um, scale. I don't have anything else really planned. OSSNA, I do have a panel that will be on, so I, I will need coverage during that. So if you are going to be there, just let me know. I'll be there and I can help. Yeah, but you're on the same panel that I am. So, oh, well. <laughs> but yeah, so that, and the other times you absolutely can help. That's totally fine too. All right. Love it. Because I feel like um, scale might not be that busy, but OSSNA is very busy. So any kind of help would be appreciated. Okay. Uh, I'll be there and I'm not on panel, so I'll, I can help you out. Awesome. Thanks, Vinod. Yay. Okay, um, and then I just want to let make sure the community knew about some open call for papers, presentations, or proposals, so whatever you want to call it. I've seen it all three. CFP is the, the abbreviation for that. Uh, if you have any ideas for talks, um, there you go. There's some places where you can submit. And we do have chaos slide templates, so if you want to give a talk about chaos and you need some slide templates, we have those. Just give a shout and we'll point you to them. Any questions about any of that? Okay. We are kind of running into our ChaosCon committee time, but um, I did want to leave space for anybody who wants to give any updates on um, any of these things. So I will just let you, if you are responsible or working on any of these things uh, and you want to give an update, you can just raise your hand. I won't go down the line. Whoever wants to give one can just raise their hand if they have anything. And if not, that's totally fine too. Because I knew I didn't even tell you, and I just sprung this on you. So, ta-da! Surprise! Okay, fair enough. Going once, going twice. All right. Well, I think we have about fourteen minutes left, so we'll save those for the ChaosCon committee. Um, if you are not on that committee, you are free to go and enjoy the rest of your day or week. And if you are on that committee, we would love it if you want to stick around and we can chat about uh, ChaosCon NA. Thanks, everybody. Sorry for the technical glitches on my internet earlier. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.